This is a response to Veritasium's post on YouTube, which was just of this photo you see here. And it depicts a electrical schematic that has a source here, a switch here, and some sort of lamp or bulb here. And you can see that it's specified that each of these legs of the circuit is one half of light year long. And so we've got you know half light year, and then it's a one meter only from the switch and source to the bulb. And so the question is, if you close this switch, how long is it going to take for this bulb to light up? Is electricity going to have to travel this half light year and then another half light year back to reach the bulb, you know, being a total of one year, or will it have to complete the whole loop being a total of two years, which are these first two options? And that's what a lot of people commented. Um, I saw some people commenting none of the above. You know, a lot of people were just saying, oh, well, you know, the if it's a light year long, then, you know, the resistance is going to be too high. and no current's going to flow, or the wires would melt, or that's impossible, which is obviously missing the point of the question. Um, and some people have the good point that, okay, it's likely going to be none of the above, because if you actually tried that in real life, if you could, um, you know, it's not going to be one of these exact numbers, but again, that's kind of missing the heart of the problem. And some people chose answer three here, which is one over C seconds, which basically would assume that the energy can travel straight to the bulb that's only one meter away and cause it to light up. Um, and I saw you know a few different reasons of why this would be, but obviously none of them were super detailed, just in a YouTube comment. And you know one one of the more obvious reasons you might think is well you know these these lines here are going to be they're going to have some capacitance between them, right? They're basically a capacitor. So you can kind of draw that in as a capacitor here, and equally on this side, we've got another capacitor here. And then you'd think, okay, if this switch is closing, we can safely assume it's an ideal switch, just because of the nature of this problem. And so it's going to have you know, some step response, right, where it's got this very sharp rising edge or falling edge, it doesn't really matter which. And uh, with that, you have very high frequency components. and Anytime you have high frequency and capacitors, you know that you know high frequency can easily pass through capacitors because the impedance of the capacitor is so low at those frequencies. So basically, we could have this uh, waveform propagate through the capacitor, through the load here, and then you know back through this capacitor and to the source, and that would allow it to flow in a, a relatively small loop. And you could say, okay, that's why this answer three is going to be likely to be correct. And that's generally in the right direction, but of course it's, you know, still an approximation, you know, approximating these as a lumped capacitor. And so it doesn't really give great insight into exactly what's happening, you know, from a physics perspective. And so just to explore that, um, we can kind of assume, okay, when the switch closes, we're going to have this step change in the electric field, and any change in electric field is going to you know, propagate outwards, um, generally in a spherical manner. It's just going to propagate equally in, in all directions. And, of course, that would take half a light year to reach this end and that end, but it would only take 1 over C seconds to reach the bulb there. Uh, but the question is, okay, just because the electric field disturbance can reach the bulb in 1 over C seconds. Uh, you know, does that actually mean that the bulb's going to light up? And, you know, what's the electric field doing? Um, and so that's where we can use uh, some sort of finite element simulation program like ANSYS, ANSYS HFSS to simulate this relatively simple setup and get uh, much better insight into what's actually going on with the electric fields and then we can we can probe currents um, and and see, okay, would this bulb light up after 1 over C seconds? So we'll go ahead and, and uh, transition into ANSYS here. And so you can see the setup I have here is kind of, you know, I tried to, to mirror that top-down view. Um, and of course, in this simulation, I don't have anything simulated as a light year long, but we can we can get the same result um, and answer the question um, just with a, a setup as simple as this where you, know, you can see here the 
the units are in centimeters, so this is even, it's not even a meter apart, but as long as you have this general aspect ratio, you can say, okay, you know, when does the current reach here? Does it, you know, does it reach the end here before it reaches there, or does it, you know, essentially jump across and, and provide power to the bulb first? Um, and so what I have here in the place of the source is a static um, voltage, basically just, uh, you know, one volt on this side, zero volts on this side, and that's just, you know, staying constant the whole time. And then here, I'm actually modeling the switch with another source, but this is a transient source. And so I've got zero volts on this side and one volt on this side. And then at 200 picoseconds, I make that source go to you know, zero. And so it basically will start to propagate that uh, low potential um, from here that way. And we will see when I start this simulation animation, um, kind of as I described earlier, you'll see it propagating in all directions. So I'll go ahead and start this. This is the magnitude of the electric field. And so you see the, the time here, once it reaches 200 picoseconds, you'll see that start to propagate, you know, generally spherically. And now you can see it traveling down the, the lines, pretty much like a transmission line, which is what it is. And then it bounces off the end, comes back, and they you know, eventually meet up here um, and reflect again, and so it kind of gets muddied with with multiple reflections, which is what you expect. And any case, you, any time that you have a DC source turning on, of course it can't turn on instantly, but you're going to have to have some settling time before it actually reaches steady state. And what's actually happening is, you know, generally you're going to have multiple reflections back and forth until it it uh, you know, kind of asymptotically reaches the you know steady state DC value, and um, so I'll let this play one more time. You can see it come down here, and it is interesting to note that the electric field strength. You can notice that you know it kind of does round this corner right when it reflects, and now is propagating um, along both wires equally, rather than you know mostly on here and kind of in between. Um, so that is a, you know, maybe a surprising thing to see. And I'll go ahead and switch to another view, which is the electric field vector. So instead of just the magnitude, you'll see little arrows indicating the direction of the electric field. So again, at 200 picoseconds, you'll see that start here. And similarly, you see it kind of spread out. But now you can see that, okay, you know, here's the low potential, here's the high potential, and vice versa, here's high potential, and now here's relatively to this line, the low potential. And that kind of rounds the corner um, and reflects back, and you see, you know, the, the similar pattern of, of reflections. Um, so this gives us a little more insight, but still doesn't really give us a great intuition of, okay, where is the current flowing and is current flowing? Uh, we know that the electric field certainly reaches here, but is it driving a current that would light a bulb? So for that, I'll go ahead and uh, change this view here. I actually included some uh, rings you can see here, one uh, basically at the source, one at the load, and then one out here as kind of a, a third point of reference. And what I can do is tell the program to integrate the magnetic field along this line, line integration, and that's basically by Ampere's law, should give you um, a value that's proportional to the current flowing through the wire. Um, and so I can do that and plot those versus time. And we see that here. In red, we have that first ring that was by the source. And of course, it uh, you see a response right at around 200 picoseconds when the, the source changes its uh, field. And then the next one we come across is actually at the load, which you know corresponds to about 50 or 60 uh, picoseconds away. And of course the dimensions don't match up to the problem exactly, but we see that it, you know, by the time the electric field reaches it, it does start driving a current. And so we also see that it's a, a reduced current um, compared to what it will eventually be. Um, and then not until the electric field reaches the very end at, you know, maybe 
300 picoseconds later, um, do we see the, the current flowing through the conductor at the end, uh, which makes sense that we don't see current flowing before the electric field can propagate. Um, and you see this uh, kind of step uh, step pattern, you know, so this um, increase in the load current corresponds to when that uh, that field kind of rounds the corner and comes back, uh, you know, bounces back from the end and reaches the center again, uh, but this time it's it's propagating along both wires equally and we see an increase in the load current. Um, and you see, you know, here it, it's when the um, the wave is coming back along the transmission line, and we see another step in this uh, this end current, and then finally it comes back all the way to the source, and so we see an increase in source current. And if I let the simulation run longer, you'd see this happen multiple times, you know, kind of uh, less and less each step until eventually it reaches some steady state value. Um, and in the in the question. That would you know take a very long time, right? Because between these steps would be you know years. So, in any case, I hope that uh, answers the question. And you know, technically, it is answer three in that we do get current flow, and you know, we can assume that we have a lamp that is able to be lit by this amount of current. Um, however, it it's not a steady state current, so there is you know some technicality to. The, okay, it'll take it'll take a year for something to happen, right? It'll take a year for this uh, step response to happen and for it to kind of trend towards the steady state value. But um, I believe that the answer should be answer three, and so we'll see when Veritasium uh, hopefully releases a video about it and see what his take on it is. Thanks for watching.